Hi, this is Alexis. I'm here with Mike, and we're talking about these Axis foils. Yeah, man, we've got a new foil board coming out on the market. It's called the Marora, and uh, stands for Flying Fish in Maori, as Adrian's a uh, Kiwi. Yep. And uh, anyways, 100% pre-preg carbon, 65 layers of carbon fiber going into a very heavy press mold, um, you know, really high quality foil. Um, you know, basically foils are airplane wings going through the water. Um, the stiffer and the, the more refined they are, the better they ride. Yep. So there's a big movement um, in the, the sport of kiting to get on the foil boards because you cannot buy higher performance uh, craft for sailing. Right. Then maybe, you know, the next thing that's it's, it's faster is America's Cup boat costs $200 million or something. <laughs> so for... This is the next best thing. Yeah, and I mean, the speed that these things do, obviously it's a big selling point is people want to foil in light air, but I was just coaching a kite foil regatta in San Francisco last month. These guys are doing 40 knots downwind and, you know, 26 knots average Jeep, you know, VMG speed upwind. So, and that's when it's windy, you know, nine meter foil kites when it's blowing and in light air with a 15 meter kite. Six, nine, eight knots of wind, you're doing 25, 28 knots, which is... Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. And the water, there's no wind and it's flat. No, no, so, no. so everybody wants to do it. So tell me about this foil. Medium aspect, low aspect, high aspect. So, uh, you know, our theory is that the higher aspect, the more efficient the foil is, the, the greater the range it has. And the difference in the lower aspect foils is they might plane off or get foiling maybe at one knot lower speed. But the stability of the foil comes in the, the quality of the testing and the, and the balance of the design. So you don't need low aspect for a kite uh, foil to get up and go and, and low wind. So if you watch the racers, um, you know, they, as soon as they get on a board, they do one little lean back and, you know, with efficient kite positioning, boom, they're foiling. And when you learn, you know, you sort of go through this like, oh my God, I'm on a bowling ball and you're rotting, rotting around trying to figure out how to keep the thing structured. Um, so this is not a full-blown race foil, but it's it's sort of an all-round free ride foil. So medium to high or medium to low? But this thing is is, is about 95% there in boat speed compared yep. to the race foils, but okay. it's a little friendlier. So you've got a uh, you know, typical surfboard design, which is you know pretty standard, and then you can look at the race board deck, and it's pretty substantially looking different. So this thing is a hybridized freak, you know, it's got some straight angles, some bevels. And what that's designed for is when the board's hauling ass up when on a reach, if you do touch down, all of those bevels and chamfers actually knock the board back up in the air. So the board at high speeds, you're not afraid, you know, you're constantly hitting chop and, you know, because you might be four foot out of the water, but then you have a, you know, big wave comes along and you're not going up. Or an ocean swell. Exactly. And that's the beauty of foiling is you're out of the water. So the decks, the race deck's been designed to, every time it touches, to, to actually keep you hauling ass in stability. The, if we move down through the range, this is our free ride race little curvier outline, thinner rails, and a little less extreme, so it actually is some carvability. So if you were doing like a carving 360 or something, it's a little friendlier when it touches down. And then the ultimate extreme end of that would be, uh, and we do offer this particular foil with two options. You can do the plate system on the bottom, which is very standard, and people love this because they can take their skimboard, their old surfboard, they can literally drill four holes, and boom, they can get out in the water, and you don't have to go out and buy a dedicated deck. Because to, it's a big investment to buy a dedicated foil board deck and the foil board, uh, you know, the whole foil system below. So this is, you know, becoming very fashionable and very uh, popular too. And here you can ride both setups. So you go to, you know, you go to Cabaret Day to go kiting in light wind in the morning. You put your foil on. You take your 10 meter out in 10 knots of wind, and people can't believe you're riding around doing 20 knots. And, you know, and you're carving, you're surfing because you're out of the water and everything's fluid and flowing. And when it gets windy, you just, you know, unscrew the system, put your quad fin set up, and you go out and ride strapless, whatever you want to do. Now, what size are these boards? Uh, good question. This board is pretty damn short. Um, shorter than anything you would ever ride. Um, I think they're, they're about 4 foot 10 to 4 foot 8 in the length. I'd actually yep. have to check. Um, we've just put this one into production. I don't know what the final measurement is, but they keep getting shorter and they keep getting smaller for racing. Right. Um, they're a little bit extreme for learning. You'd want to learn on a slightly bigger board. Like, you know, this is going to be a little friendlier with the width. But the whole game of learning to foil is getting uh, really efficient with your kite skills so that you don't ever overpower the foil because it's so delicate you, it, it doesn't ever skid. So if you overload anything and you, you just get bucked off it, as you know, I'm sure you've been having at it for yeah, a while. <laughs> Everybody goes through those learning curves. Yeah, so it's humbling, you know, to, to learn the process, but a lot of fun. Yeah. So where can they find more information about the foils and all the boards? AccessKiteboarding.com. We have a Facebook page and also on, you know, on the web.com. Well, thank you so much. Everybody.